Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a mowing review of the steel RMA 510V. I haven't mowed this yet this year and some areas are six seven inches tall others not so much. It did rain yet this morning so the grass is a little wet so we're going to give it a real good test to see how much power it has and how well it mulches bags and side discharges. So let's get started. Down in the dirt. After we do the mulch and the side discharge and the and the bagging tests, Jason's going to go ahead and mow this entire area here. This is about 55 by 70 or about 4,400 square feet, and we'll see how well that battery does. According to Steel, this battery should mow about 3,500 square feet, so. Let's see how true that is. Again, the grass is kind of long, it's a little wet, so this is going to be a good test. All right, all right, so let's put the battery in it and play around. <clears throat> Does it matter which one? Bottom one, and push it till it snaps. Okay. This is our first time using this mower, so we'll have to get the speed adjusted mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So the, the trigger is on the right hand side, way over on the right, way over there. Oh, I see. Two handles, one for the safety to run the blade and another one to drive it. Now we got to figure out how fast we can walk. Yeah, it is. It's real quiet. It's quieter than any of the rest of them. All right, we're going to make one more pass mulching. And as you can see, it's not leaving any clumps at all on the top. This grass is all different heights and different types of grass and it's picking it up nice and evenly all right so put the side discharge in it's pretty simple all you have to do is lift up the lid and latch it in and there it is now we'll see how evenly it spreads. We're going to throw it into the area that we've done already, so...
All right, so now to put the put the bagger on, there is a mulch plug. So you got to lift up the door, pull the plug out, and then just put it on like a normal bagger. That's all there is to it. That's simple. Nice little handle. Nice handle. Looks like it's going to be pretty good. When you get through bagging, then we'll have to go ahead and put that plug back in to mulch. So, Jason's going to fill up the bagger. I picked up a little bit in that heavier grass. And as you can see in this other video, it doesn't leave any clippings. It picks it up nice and clean. I do like how much air is going into the bag. We'll get it up here a little bit closer and show you how it's blowing up. You can see that there's a lot of air going into that bag. It's nice and plump. That's a good sign that it's throwing grass real well. It kicks in, kicks up to that higher speed in that thicker grass, but it comes right back out of it again. It uh, has plenty of power for a push mower. And as you can see, some of that stuff is, we're cutting off a good uh, six inches in some of those spots. So I'm impressed with it that way. So while Jason's filling up the bag here, one thing that I really like so far is how quiet it is. It's got a conventional mulching blade underneath it, nothing special. Uh, in other words, it just, it's a good blade, it works. That uh, big fan underneath the, to keep the engine cool doesn't add any extra noise to it. And it has an awful lot of power for a 36 volt machine. I kind of expected it to be more, you know, like some of the other cheaper brands, power-wise, but no. This one has as much power as the Toro, 60 volt. And it has more power than that Husqvarna that we looked at last year. I don't have an Ego to compare it to, but I'm sure that uh, this one will stay right up with the, the Ego. When we get the bag full, we'll check the battery and see how much room we got left here to mow with it. It does take a while to get used to the self-repel on it. And, you know, there's a lot of machines out there today that have two different levers. One for the safety on the blades and another one for the drive unit. Well, he's going to make for sure that that bag is packed completely full. I can see that. He's just going to keep going until you get that spot done. Alright, so here's the reveal. Let's see what we got. Not very much. I expected that to be full, yeah. but okay. It's pretty full. Yeah, it's it fills it in and throws it in. It's real wet and heavy, so I don't think we're going to put any more grass in that bag today. We'll try filling it up again some other time. So now, when you want to go back to to uh, mulching, you have to put the plug back in. Yep. 
All right, so while Jason's finishing up there, let's go take a look at some of these areas. Well, I went to show you the lawn and my camera memory card was full. I didn't see it. So here's a morning after shot. As you can see, it cuts it very nice and evenly. Little spots right through here where the grass is really thin. Nice cut, quite happy with it. So I went, if it was drier, it would cut it perfectly, I believe. Because it was so yet wet yesterday, <clears throat> it didn't pick up every single piece, but it did lift the grass up really well. It cut it very well. If the grass was drier, mowing job would e look even better. I'm happy with it. All right, it has plenty of power. It mulches very well. You can't see any gra grass clippings. It side discharged nice, nice and evenly. And as you could see, it bags very well. So, all right, now back to the regular scheduled broadcast. Go look at this. What do you see? Three bars. It only used one bar to mow this whole thing. That's well, pretty good. That is really good. I was told that uh, steel had good batteries, but I'm starting to believe it now. Now, when I tell you that uh, that blower, it'll run 45, 40 to 45 minutes on a battery, I guess you can believe me too. That's proof. So, and this uh, AP300S that we got in that trimmer, that one can actually, has about 30% more capacity. Go forward. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I like that trimmer a lot. I and mean, there's a lot of good trimmers out there, but that one is definitely the best. You'll have to be careful along that fence because it's real hard to see it. Yeah, that is with that speed dial on there, you can slow it down so you don't have to try and hold the trigger with your finger. That way, you can do more delicate work like this. That fence is real, real delicate, so I don't want to tear it up too bad. Even scaled back, it's got a lot of power. I don't know, it still has plenty of torque when it's running real slow. It's lightweight, but yet it's got a lot of power. Yeah, see, I think it's a little heavy, but that's just me. Sure. And it but does, I mean, compared to gas. It's, compared to gas, yeah. It's got a lot of power, too. So. Yeah. Cool. All right. What do you guys think? This one a keeper or not? Let's uh, grab it and tip it over on its side once and see how dirty it looks underneath. Yes, for. Make sure you don't have to worry about gas leaking out. No, you don't have to worry about gas. You don't have to worry about which side you tip it on. Yeah, it's got plenty, it's got enough buildup in it, but it's all fine particles, and I'll take the hose, and that'll just wash right out. So, yeah. simple to do. Three. All right. <clears throat> now for the bad news for you guys. I am not going to show you a comparison video between this and the Toro 60 volt. Why? Because my daughter and son-in-law bought a new house down in Illinois, and for for a for a housewarming gift? for a housewarming gift, <laughs> I gave her the Toro 60 volt set. So I gave them the snowblower and the mower and the trimmer and the blower. So, but you can go back and watch my video on the Toro from last year to get an idea how that compares to this. But overall, I like this 
mower a lot. I think uh, if I were to put this against the Toro, uh, other than getting used to the drives on this, I don't think there'd be any difference. And uh, I really like the speed control. You like the speed control? Yeah. It it. I'm I'm a type of guy that's used to that type of speed control. In other words, you got to the mower has to drag me along because if I'm there walking with the personal pace, I just tend up end up going slower and slower. So, and that extra piece right there, that's for that's for a camera mount, just in case you're going to ask me. All right, before I close out this video, I do want to talk about the battery life on this mower. After we mowed this whole area, pulled the battery out, I was actually confused because it had so much battery life left in it. It only used 25% of this battery to mow this entire area. The Husqvarna that I had last year will, would use up one of the two batteries. And supposedly those are 4 amp, I think this one maybe is a 5 amp. So it would use up one 4 amp hour battery to do this entire this area right here like I said this area is 55 by 70 so by my calculation that's what 4400 square feet steel says that this battery is supposed to mow about 3500 so I expected it to wear out I guess not if I compare this to the Toro 60 volt I got the seven and a half amp hour battery the 400 watt hour battery and that would use about half of that battery to mow this area. So I know the uh, using the blower, most batteries they get about 20 minutes or so runtime out of a battery, and I was always I always can get 40 minutes using that steel. So these mat batteries are exceptional and well worth the money, especially from the fact that this one is the smaller of the two that I bought. Does that make this the best mower? Well, that's for you to, to decide. I like how well it mulches. It was kind of tough conditions today. Um, the grass was wet, the grass was really long, and it left no clumps on top of the lawn. It drove it all back down in there. Side discharge, uh, today that's kind of hard to decipher. Uh, you know, even with this wet grass, it was spreading it out evenly. And uh, I think with dry grass, we'll be able to see it better. I'll do another short video later on showing off the side discharge. Bagging the same way. Uh, this grass is a little thin, so, but we bagged almost this in what bagged at least half of this lawn and checked it and it was only half full so it does a good job of throwing the grass all the way to the back so i'm going to take a wild guess that it will pack the bag really well too so overall i'm really impressed with this mower i like the toro 60 volt so far and i like this one also so it's six to one half a dozen the other if you want to buy the toro I can highly recommend it. If you want to buy this steel, I can highly recommend it. Some of the features that I do like, which I showed you in the walk around video last week, is I like the way the handle folds down on this in multiple ways. So you can store it underneath your workbench. You can fold it up real nice and small to put it in your car or put it on a shelf over winter. It's fairly quick and easy to fold and use. I like the fact that it's an all steel deck and steel handles and just in everything possible on it is steel. It does have the ball bearing wheels in it so it pushes as easy as can be. Uh, they're sealed ball bearing wheels so that they'll last. The controls are normal when it comes to these things. In other words, you got one lever for the to start and stop the blade and another to start and stop the speed control. I do like the dial on it, and Jason did like the speeds. He said they got up and moved just nice, really nice for him. So he likes to walk. If it walks fast enough for him, I'm sure it'll walk fast enough for you. All right, to finish off, so you can go back 
and watch the videos that I've done with the Toro and comparing that to the Husqvarna and then look at this video today to this one so, so you can make your own decision which one you like better. Some people like the Toro controls. The control, Toro controls are easier to use but not everybody gets along with that personal pace. I like the, these type of controls. It's a little, they're a little more awkward but again, I'm used to having the more drag me along. So if I use a personal pace, I end up walking slower and slower as the day goes on. All right, enough rambling. If you like this video, please like it. If you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Down in the dirt Well, now that we're done mowing, it looks like the sun's going to come out and dry things out. One thing nice about an electric mower is, number one, you can tip it up on its side. Number two, take the battery out and then you can wash it with a garden hose. And I'm going to use a little bit more stream here. Let's see how this is. There, that works. So you can blow it off with your blower if you want, but you can also use a garden hose to clean them. I don't recommend that you use a pressure washer because you can get too much pressure and force it into the electrical components. So, but a garden hose is fine. And then just tip it over on its side. You can do this with the steel. I know you can do this with the Toro and the Husqvarna. I don't know how much pressure you can actually put on the, the Eagle ones. But I think you can use a hose to wash them out with. And I'm going to use a shower here to get it all clean. Tip it back up.